Good evening, boys and girls and Midway families. This week for our Tuesday tale, I will be reading for you Singing with Mama Lou. It is by Linda Jacobs Altman, and it is illustrated by Larry Johnson. It was Sunday again and raining. The sky was as gray as Tamika's mood. She peered out the car window and sighed. I still don't see why we have to do this every week. Half the time, Mama Lou doesn't even know who we are, but the other half she does, said Tamika's father. And that, her mother added, is reason enough. Tamika knew that there was no use arguing. Other families watched football on Sunday afternoons or had cookouts in the backyard. The Jordans went to the nursing home. That had been that way of things for almost two years. Mama Lou had something called Alzheimer's disease. Tamika didn't know much about it except that it made Mama Lou forget things. As usual, the old woman was sitting in the community room, clasping and unclasping her gnarled hands and singing to herself. Mama Lou sang all the time, hymns and spirituals and blues and soul and once in a while old TV commercials. Go say hello, Tamika's father whispered and nudged her in Mama Lou's direction. Tamika bit her lip. She used to tell her dreams and deepest secrets to Mama Lou. Now she had to tell her her name. I'm Tamika Luella Jordan, Mama Lou, she said. I was named after you. I'm nine years old, almost 10. Mama Lou looked Tamika up and down as if she were seeing her for the first time. You're skinny as a stick, child. Folks be feeding you? The old woman didn't wait for an answer. She threw her head back and started to sing. They call me skinny, but I'm really just doggone tall. Everyone in the community room turned to stare. Tamika wished she could scoot under a sofa and hide. Her parents just laughed. That skinny blues, Mama Lou said. Wrote it myself back in my singing days. Mama Lou smiled then, but just with her mouth, not with her eyes. Her eyes were empty. She started telling Tamika's parent how she spent yesterday at a civil rights rally, listening to Martin Luther King give a speech. The Jordans never reminded her that Dr. King had been dead for years. Tamika turned away while the grown-ups talked. She found herself uh, in a corner and stayed there. When her parents said it, it was time to leave, she darted out of the room without a word of goodbye. Her parents didn't like that one bit. Tamika could tell by her silence on the drive home. The night after supper, Tamika's father took out Mama Lou's scrapbook. There were pictures of Mama Lou singing with bands and choirs, marching in civil rights demonstrations, dressed for her wedding in an African bridal robe. There was even a newspaper clipping of Mama Lou in jail with a crowd of protesters, all of them singing, We Shall Overcome. The last picture Tamika saw that night reminded her of the days of secrets and dreams, when Mama Lou was her best friend in the world. There was Mama Lou reading her bedtime stories, teaching her to ride a bike, and dressing her like an angel for her first ever Christmas pageant. My halo kept slipping, said Tamika, smiling at the memory. Her father laughed. Then he held up a picture of Mama Lou smiling tenderly in to feed the face of a newborn baby. You were her first grandchild. She loved you like nothing I've seen. Now I figure that's worth a few Sunday afternoons, memory or no memory. Don't you? Yes, Daddy, Tamika said quietly. Then there was Tamika decided to do something that was supposed to be impossible. Give Mama Lou back her memories. Not all of them, maybe, but some. There had to be way to give back at least some. Tamika started the very next week with the grandbaby picture. All the way to the nursing home, she practiced what she was going to say and do. When she got there, she walked up to Mama Lou, hugged her and said, I am Tamika Luella Jordan, Mama Lou. I was named after you. I'm nine years old, almost 10. She handed Mama Lou the pictures. This is us, you and me. Mama Lou 
a bit hard at Tamika, then at the picture in her hand. This little baby is you? That's me, Mama Lou smiled. Well, you've surely grown, she said, and a hint of memory twinkled in her eyes for a moment. Tamika wanted to cheer. It worked. She had reached something in her grandmother, something deep down that not even Alzheimer's had touched. Mama Lou held the picture against her and closed her eyes. Softly, she began to sing, rock a baby in a treetop. Tamika joined her. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. It was a special time. With every visit, Tamika brought another memento, uh, memento from Mama Lou's past. There were school yearbooks and press corsages, autograph books with fake leather coverings, ticket stubs from movies and concerts long past. Tamika learned the story to go with each memento and told it to her grandmother. They sang songs together, making up new words when it suited them. And so it went. Autumn turned to winter and finally to spring again. Nine, almost ten, became plain ten. Mama Lou got worse. Sometimes she didn't recognize the mementos Tamika bought her. Sometimes she hardly spoke at all. When she stopped singing, even Tamika's parents got discouraged. Tamika wouldn't quit. She went through Mama Lou's things three times. She thought and thought. What could reach through the darkness that had settled over her grandmother's mind? Finally, she found the perfect thing. The newspaper story about the civil rights demonstrators getting arrested. The next Sunday, Tamika looked, took the clipping with her to the nursing home. She found Mama Lou sitting in the rocking chair, staring at an empty wall. Hello, Mama Lou, she said. I am Tamika Luella Jordan, and I'm named after you. I'm 10 years old. Tamika unfolded the clipping and pointing to the picture. Look, Mama Lou, this is you in jail. Mama Lou looked then, looked again. Well, now, the clink, the joint, the calaboose, my secret life of crime. She laughed, then a deep booming sound that started in her chest and rolled with great waves from her lips. The laugh was infectious. Tamika caught it and laughed until she almost cried. Her parents caught it too. They were all busy laughing when Mama Lou closed her eyes and began to sway. Her voice rose over the laughter and she started and turned into a prayer. She sang, We Shall Overcome the way in which it is sounded in the day in the jailhouse, deep and rich and free. Tamika joined her grandmother and together they sang. Soon other voices picked up the song until half the people in the sitting room were singing, swaying together and sharing the moment. When the singing finished, Mama Lou pressed the clipping into Tamika's hand. Don't let this get lost, honey, she whispered. Tamika saw the tears in her grandmother's eyes and knew she wasn't about one yellow news clipping. It was about the memories Mama Lou was losing. It was about her whole life. Don't worry, Mama Lou, said Tamika. I'll keep it safe. That was the last time Tamika really talked with her grandmother. Mama Lou's eyes went empty and stayed that way. It was sad, of course, and Tamika cried, but mostly she remembered. Tamika made a special scrapbook of all the things she had shared with Mama Lou. She looked at it every now and then, and sometimes when she was scared or uncertain or just plain blue, she would close her eyes and sing, We Shall Overcome, until the world seemed a bit brighter and a better place. The end. Thank you, boys and girls, for reading with me, um, singing with Mama Lou. I hope that all of you have a special pet person in your life, such as a grandparent, that you can reflect upon your memories with. Good night, boys and girls.